Good morning. Welcome to week six of this online ongoing course on architectural graphics or engineering graphics here. I am your course instructor, Dr. Avlokita Agrawal from IIT Roorkee Department of Architecture and Planning. In this course, in the bygone five weeks, we have already covered understanding orthographic projections of points, lines and planes and we took different conditions uh, related to these the location of these points, lines and planes. And prior to doing that, we have also looked at the basics, the fundamentals of drawing, what are the different tools to use and we also uh, learned about the basic geometrical construction. Now from today, which is the week 6, we will be starting to learn about the orthographic projections of solids. When I say solids, we are largely going to deal with regular solids and we are not going to uh, concern ourselves with irregular solids. However, if you learn thoroughly about the fundamentals of drawing orthographic projections for regular solids, you will be in a capacity to draw the orthographic projections of irregular solids as well. But before we go on to discuss about the orthographic projections of different types of solids, we must first understand what are the different types of solids that we are talking about. And for each type of solid, the way in which we draw the orthographic projections might vary slightly. So the first thing we are going to do today is to understand about the different types of solids. So, Broadly, the regular solids are divided into two broad categories. The first one is polyhedra and the other one is solids of revolution. Now, polyhedra is a group of solids or the solids which have multiple different faces arranged in certain fashion. So, there will be a rule, there will be a clause based on which the solid will be generated. So, it will just be combination of various faces, different faces put together which makes these solids called polyhedra while the solids which are called which are which come under this category of solids of revolution, they are the solids which are formed by revolving any one shape about a central axis. So, we will see how what are the different types of solids which come into each of these categories today before we move on to orthographic projection. So, let us first learn about the first group of solids which is polyhedra and a large number of solids actually come under this group, this category called polyhedra. A lot of these solids you mu must be familiar with. Now, the first group of solids is this prism. So, what is a prism? Prism is any solid which has a base and that base is extruded along an axis, a vertical axis. Most likely it is a vertical axis and it is situated or it is originating from the center of the base. So, if you look at the screen, we have different types of these prisms here. First one is this triangular prism. Now, what is a triangular prism? It has the base as a triangle. So, we have a triangular base here. Now, on top of it from the center of this base which is the triangle, we have an axis. If you remember, we have this central axial line. So, this is the perpendicular right now in this case it is perpendicular. So, this perpendicular is passing through the center of the base and along this each of this side is extruded to form a rectangular face. So, what we have what are the different parts of a prism? We have a base. So, we will basically have two bases if you look at that and it could be any shape. It has an axis which is in most likely cases perpendicular and then along the side of the base, each side of the base, we have an extruded rectangle and the two bases are connected 
with the help of these faces. So, what we have here is we have face, we have a base, we have an axis. This is what we have for a prism. So, what do we see here? We have a triangular prism. Now, what does a triangular prism mean? It has a triangular base and it has three rectangular faces because it is a triangular base and an axis. Square prism which has a square as a base and then each of its faces is again rectangular and goes and meets another square in the top. A pentagonal prism will have a pentagonal base and then the faces which are rectangular only. So, we again have rectangular faces. Hexagonal prism the base changes to hexagon. Rectangular prism the base changes to rectangle. All these are regular prisms with perpendicular axis. So, we have two within prism we will have two categories. So, one where the axis is perpendicular to the base and the other one where the axis is making a certain angle with the base. So, it is not perpendicular. However, each of its, so the top and bottom will remain the square or, or whatever the base shape is and each of the face instead of becoming a rectangle, it will become a parallelogram. So, what we will have? The faces will not remain rectangular anymore, they will turn to parallelogram. So, that is what we are going to get here. This is the broad category of prism. I must show you some of the prisms, some of the very simple prisms which so that you can relate what a prism could be. If you look at this solid, this is actually a prism. Now, what is the base? The base shape is actually octagon. So, we have this prism which is an octagonal prism and what do we get here? This is a vertical prism where the axis is perpendicular to the base. Now, we have two bases which are octagonal and each of the face of this prism is a rectangle. So, whenever we will draw, we have to know very clearly that in a perpendicular prism, in a right angled prism, not perpendicular prism, but a right angled prism, we will always get the faces as rectangles. So, depending upon the angle from which you will be looking at this prism, either you will be seeing an octagon or you will be seeing a rectangle and then there will be deformations of it depending upon how this prism is going to be placed with reference to the reference planes. So, this is what we know of as prism. It could be any type of prism depending upon the base shape. So, as I have shown from triangular to square, pentagon, hexagon, now I have shown you an octagon. It could be any type of prism and it will remain to be called as a prism only. So, these are the different types of prisms, but one thing here what would a, a cube be called? Is a cube a prism? A cuboid, is it a prism? Yes, they are prisms, they are polyhedra. So, if we look at the cube here, what happens? That we have a square base, we have a top base, there is an axis which is perpendicular and each of this face is rectangle, but here in this case the height of this prism is equal to the side of the base and in that case when all the sides become equal this rectangular prism becomes or square prism becomes a cube. If the height is more then we get a cuboid. So, cuboid is also a type of rectangular prism it is it is a rectangular prism. So, cube is a prism as well. The next set of solids that we have which is also commonly used is the pyramids. Now, if you remember or if you have heard of the pyramids of uh, Egypt, then you know you have a certain idea that okay, what a pyramid is, but pyramid is not just a square base pyramid. So, what you see in Egypt 
or what you must have seen in pictures of Egyptian pyramids is that they are all square pyramids. So, they have a square base and then they have a top point single point which is called the apex. So, instead of the act the faces remaining rectangular if the faces become triangular and they go and meet in one single point called apex the shape which emerges is called a pyramid now pyramids are also of various types again here the base we have the base here exactly similar to that of a prism we have an axis so we will have an axis here which we had in pyramid as uh, prism as well and the height of this is the height we also had the height in prism so prism and pyramid both have height the only difference being that we only have one base here while in prism we had two bases and in this case the top is one single point where all the lines converge now what happens because of this that each of the face is triangular we will always get triangular faces for pyramids and also for regular solids for regular pyramids we will get isosceles triangle in some cases it may become depending upon what the height is in some cases we may get equilateral triangles also but essentially we will definitely get isosceles triangles in the pyramids so what do we get we get one base one axis one apex and some number of triangular faces that is what the pyramid will be formed of so if i say prism it means that it is a rectangular cylinder like uh, solid and if I say pyramid, it means I am talking about a cone like solid. So, you must always have this difference in your mind when a question is given to you whenever. So, it will be a word problem which you will have to draw. So, do not ever confuse between these prisms and pyramids. So, again different types of pyramids are there depending upon the shape of the base. So, we could have triangular pyramid where we have a triangular base, a square pyramid where we have a square base, pentagonal pyramid, a pentagon in base, hexagonal pyramid, a hexagon in base and so on. It could be again multiple types of pyramids. Let me show you some of these pyramids so that it becomes clearer to you how or what these pyramids are. So, what we have here this one is an octagonal pyramid so what we have in the base is an octagon so if you look at this it is an octagon and if you look at this this is a right angled uh, pyramid so the angle between the axis and the base is 90 degrees it is perpendicular and if you look at each of this face each of the face is triangle so again depending upon where you are going to be seeing this from this cone this uh, pyramid we will be seeing either triangles or if you look at it from the top we will actually be seeing an octagonal shape with multiple triangles in it which is these edges so these are the edges and these are the triangular surfaces i have another pyramid for you this one is a pentagonal pyramid here so what we have in base is a pentagon and what we have here its axis is perpendicular to this base and we have these triangular faces here which meet up in the apex so this is a pentagonal pyramid let us see which one is this one this is again a pentagonal pyramid so we have a pentagon in the base and then we have these triangular faces and an apex at the top so any pyramid for that matter we will get essentially triangular isosceles triangles or in some cases could be equilateral triangles depending upon the height of the cone so this is what our pyramid is the next set of solids is platonic solids now 
what is a platonic solid i'm sure you must have at least read the definition of platonic solids in your uh, schools so a platonic solid it is a regular convex polyhedron and it is constructed by congruent regular polygonal faces so it is not essential that it has rectangular faces or triangular faces it is regular polygonal faces with the same number of faces meeting at each vertex so at each vertex there will be some given number of these uh, polygonal faces and that will be creating that will be generating the solid the polyhedron solid now five solids qualify to be called as platonic solids the first one we have a tetrahedron what is a tetrahedron it has four triangle equilateral triangular faces so it has four faces each of it being a an equilateral triangle so what happens that at each point as you read it uh, it has same number of faces meeting at each vertex so at this vertex what we have we will have three triangular faces at this vertex also we will have three triangular faces and likewise this is tetrahedron what is a cube cube has three square faces meeting at each vertex so if you look at each vertex we will have three square faces meeting this is another platonic solid what is an octahedron an octahedron is formed by equilateral triangles but there are eight equilateral triangles meeting and at each vertex we have four we have four equilateral triangles meeting at each vertex so if you look at this we have one two three and one at the back here if you say one two three and one towards the bottom similarly here one two three and fourth at the back so at each vertex we have four equilateral triangles meeting in an octahedron we have another one which is called dodecahedron in dodecahedron we have pentagons meeting together so at each vertex we have three pentagons coming together so it is always a convex solid and then we have same number of faces meeting at each of the vertex so in a dodecahedron we have regular pentagons and each vertex has three pentagons coming together which is what is called a dodecahedron and the last one is an icosahedron so for icosahedron we have five equilateral triangular surfaces meeting at each vertex and there are a total of 20 faces so only five solids actually qualify for being called as platonic solids and the condition remains that at each vertex it's the same number of faces meeting together and these are regular regular faces regular uh, planes the next one within polyhedra is archimedean solids and as the name suggests these solids were defined or identified by archimedes so there are 13 of such solids such uh, uh, solids which are called as archimedean solids and archimedean solid is slightly different from platonic solid what happens in archimedean solids is that it is formed by combination of two or more regular solids and the condition remains that at each point the number of faces joining again remains the same for all different types of faces all different types of uh, regular polygons that are coming together so for example in this case if you look what we will have we will have two triangular equilateral triangular faces and we will have two square faces coming together that will remain to be uniform throughout and a solid formed by this is a cuboctahedron and these solids these archimedean archimedean solids are arrived by 
there are several ways but largely by truncating regular solids. So, some of these are uh, derived by truncating a cube for example, this one this is a truncated cube. Now, if the corners of the cube are cut, so in this case what we have at each vertex we will have a, an octagon. So, we will have two octagons coming together and we will have an equilateral triangle. This is what we derive out of a truncated cube. A truncated octahedron will have one hexagonal face sorry two hexagonal faces and one square face coming together. These are 13. So, if you go and look at it in detail we will have 13 different types of Archimedean solids. We are not going to cover this part in uh, our projections of solids, but it is very interesting to read and as you are going to become architects or engineers, you might be using some of these very interesting shapes in designing. So, go ahead and read about each of these shapes of these Archimedean solids. So, these were the different types of polyhedra, different types of solids which are formed by putting together different types of faces in a in a very uh, organized manner, in a fixed fixed with a rule manner. The next types of solids are called the solids of revolution. As the name suggests, these solids are derived by revolving a particular shape, any given shape along an axis and hence the solid is produced. So, the first one that we know of which is the simplest is a cylinder. What is a cylinder? A cylinder is a solid of revolution which is formed by rotating a rectangle. So, if you rotate this rectangle which is say O A B O dash by 360 degrees like this. So, we fix this side which is O O dash and we rotate this we revolve this around by a complete 360 degree we will get a cylinder. So, in a cylinder what do we have? We have a base, we have height which is h, we will have a radius. This is what will define a cylinder which is formed by revolving a rectangular about one of its side which is also called the axis. So, we could have different types of cylinders, we could have hollow cylinders, we could have right circular cylinders. Now, in both the cases the axis is again perpendicular to the base and in case the axis is making certain angle with the base it is called an oblique cylinder as it is slightly inclined. So, this is the simple shape of cylinder and I do not really have to show it to you, but then cylinder is this which has two circular faces and there is one face which is connecting these two circular faces. So, there is no rectangular face, there is no triangular face which forms the cylinder. The next solid of revolution is cone which is again very simple. Now, how do we derive, how do we arrive at cone? The cone is formed by rotating a right angled triangle about its perpendicular side. So, if we by 360 degrees. So, if we rotate, if we revolve this triangle, the right angle triangle about its perpendicular side, then we will get a cone. In the cone again, cone is a type of pyramid. So, what we have? Base is a circle. The apex we have, we have an axis of height h and there will be a radius to the base, which is the definition of its size the base radius. In case the axis is not perpendicular, in case the axis makes an angle with the base it is called an oblique cone. Again 
we have been using and seeing cones you must be familiar with the, the various formula of deriving the area surface area the volume of the cones but remember that cone is again a solid of revolution and we do not have any rectangular or triangular face to it we just have a base face which is which is circle in this case and the rest is a continuous shape and the shape of this surface which is the face of the cone and it is formed or it is defined by these generators which connect the apex to any point on the center. The shape of this in case we want to open it up in case we want to uh, construct the cone depends upon the height and the radius height of the cone and the radius of the base. So, you must have already seen and you must be familiar with what cone is and we have already read about the conic sections as part of the geometric construction, the basic geometric construction, but this is what a cone is, simple apex base and a continuous surface around it. The last one of this, uh, these solids of revolution is a sphere. And what is a sphere? A sphere is a solid which is generated by rotating, revolving a hemisphere. So, if you look at this, if you rotate this hemisphere by 360 degree, so if we rotate it by 360 degrees, we will get a sphere. It is as simple as that. And the only thing that we have to remember, the only dimension that we have to remember is that of a radius in a sphere. So, it is a continuous surface and it is arrived by revolving a hemisphere about its diameter. So, you have already seen spheres, you are familiar with what spheres are and what we have here is we are rotating this hemisphere by 360 degrees solid and then what we get as a resultant solid is this sphere. So, these were the different solids of revolution, the basic solids of revolution. Now, there is another category which is derived from these basic solids which is frustum. Now, the frustum could also be of the solid of revolution or of a polyhedra, but what a frustum is? When we have a cone or a pyramid sliced by a plane, so this is the section plane. So, when it cuts what happens? We get two parts of this cone, the original cone. The top part still remains to be a cone, but of a different height of different dimension. The bottom part where the base originally was, which does not have an apex now is called the frustum of a cone. So, as I said, we could be having frustum of a cone or we could also be having a frustum of a pyramid. So, suppose this was a cone, then we get frustum of a cone and in case, in this case, this was a square pyramid. So, if the pyramid was cut, if the pyramid was cut through a plane, a section plane here, the bottom part which is left here is the frustum of pyramid and the top part still remains to be known as the pyramid and here in this cone, in this uh, figure, this is the cone because the original shape is intact and they still have the apex. Here in a frustum, if we continue to produce these lines, if we continue to produce these lines, they will still be going and meeting in an apex. That is the essence of it. So, we will, we may still have, we may still get, if we continue to produce these lines upwards, they will go and meet in an apex and that is what will result in a cone or a pyramid. That is what the frustum is. So, it is, it is a regular solid, but it is just derived by cutting a regular cone or a pyramid. So, these were the various kinds of solids that we are, we might be needing in our engineering or architecture practice and we have to learn to draw the projections, orthographic projections of each type of solid. So, that is all in the lecture today. 
Thank you very much for joining me and in the next lecture onwards of this week we will be drawing the orthographic projections of some of these regular solids. So, thank you again. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.